Uh, so uh, libero copper um, and gold now. Yes, that's right. Is uh, Actually, once we get into it, you'll, you'll see what we, we founded the company a couple years ago, Leo Hathaway and myself, to, uh, to recreate really what, what uh, Leo did with Ross Beatty on, on all the Lumina companies and acquire large porphyry copper projects throughout the Americas without fatal flaws. And we've acquired two of those. We have 11 billion pounds of copper. But, you know, so I will go through that project, but this is a financing conference and you'll notice every other company here is a gold and silver company. So we'll, uh, we'll focus on our gold project. In, in BC. So we have 93 million shares outstanding. We financed this summer actually. We raised uh, for almost $4 million and we were a million dollar oversubscribed. And we're spending that money right now with uh, our work program at Big Red in BC. And as soon as, you know, how our business works, as soon as we uh, get through this work program, we'll have to finance next year's, next year's program. So it's, uh, it, as, as with all of these, these junior companies, it's really important who the team is. So our, uh, our team's made up of Bill Bennett, who was the Minister of Mines in British Columbia for 16 years. So once we acquired the BC Gold property, uh, I asked Bill to join us. Then he's been instrumental in dealing with the, uh, the Taltan and the permitting. We actually got our drill permits in two weeks in September after we made a discovery. <laughs> Um, and the geology team, both Leo Hathaway and Rob Pease have had very, very successful careers and have, have multiple times have, have de-risked big porphyry chart projects and sold them. There's some examples of their, uh, of their wins in the past. So if you look at the valuation of, of Libero um, copper assets, you know, we only have a 15 million market cap today, even after announcing the, the gold discovery. Um, and if, in these, these, uh, we have 11 billion pounds of copper in the ground. If you look at that versus any comparable, it's, uh, it's very, very undervalued. We're just a, a fraction of a penny per pound, when typically these things sell for about four cents per pound. And that'll change once, the, uh, once there's a market for copper. I mean, right now people are excited about gold, but copper will come back, it always does. Here's just some examples of, of porphyry copper projects in South America like ours that have sold in the past, and they typically sell for about $400 million. And they're very similar. This is the last 10 projects that have sold and very, very similar grade to our project. And Leo was the VP exploration on four or five of them. So this is our main copper project in Macoa in Colombia. It was discovered in the 70s, so we've had by the government, funded by the UN. So lots of work has been done on it. It was, um, they actually did a full feasibility study in the 1980s, so we know that the metallurgy is good. There's no nasties in it. It's a, a concentrate that people would want. Uh, there's no fatal flaws at all. You can drive right to the project. B2 owned it, they, and they drilled along a, a ridge line there and outlined a deposit already of 700 million tons of 0.45 copper equivalent with Molly. Of course, B2 is a gold company, and this is Copper Molly, so it sat on the shelf there for 10 years before we uh, acquired it. And B2 is now a, a shareholder of, of Libero. It's in the Jurassic Belt, just across the border from Ecuador, where there's some, some very large, very similar copper deposits that have now been built into mines. Some of these drill holes were, are really amazing. If we, if we uh, in a, in a when, if we had a copper market and we released drill holes like this of six, seven hundred meters of half a percent copper and high grade molly, it would, it would be exciting. And we will as soon as there is a market for that. You can see here in our, our pit outline, which is for the 700 million tons, there's some 1% copper, large intercepts for hundreds of meters right below our pit. So with some more drilling down here, we can expand that pit and it'll make a, a very big difference on the grade and tonnage. Actually, just to the east of here too, we've recently discovered a new, in, a new copper and soils anomaly that's a higher grade than this original anomaly that B2 drilled. So there is lots of room to expand this, and typically they come in clusters, these porphyry targets down here. So that was the copper project, and we got five minutes left to talk about why we're really here. <laughs> so with Makoa, we'll, um, we're, we, we've drill permitted that, uh, we're ready to go, but we're going to do it when it's the right time in the copper market to do so. Big Red was uh, actually, before I go on, this is our ridge target when we talk about that in a bit. Um, and it was covered by glaciers. It's, it's actually really interesting up there how these glaciers have retreated. And a lot of these areas here, like, like all down here, that's the outcropping mineralization that was covered by a glacier just a few years ago. 
So here's where we are, it's right, right there. So we're just west of GT Gold's uh, saddle deposit and north of Galore Creek. And our project is, is, has a lot of similarities with GT Gold's project. So these are our main two targets right now. Copper Bowl is uh, 500 ppm copper and soils anomaly that over three kilometers length. And then the ridge target just to the south of that is about a kilometer in, um, in, in uh, diameter of high grade gold target. And these are both porphyry targets with epithermal overlays. And actually with our reconnaissance sampling that we've just done, we've just done over the last couple months and we're gonna get the samples back this month, we've made a couple more discoveries as well where we have another gold target up here and another gold target we call Terry Creek um, just over here. So it's a huge, huge, huge project and I think we'll, we'll keep making discoveries here uh, for, for years to come. So this is, uh, um, we acquired the project in the spring, and then we, no one had ever compiled the, like, the, the results. So in BC, British Columbia, you have to file an assessment report every year, and these are hard copies filed with the government, but, you're, but they're freely available to the public. So we actually downloaded 55 years of reports and digitized them and, and overlaid them with each other. That's the first time that had ever happened. And that's where we made these, uh, these ridge and copper bowl um, really discoveries by overlaying all this, these historic samples. And then we did reconnaissance work this summer where we went and um, did really chip, chip samples over huge areas. And a lot of uh, the, the best results all came back to one area, to copper bowl, where we had um, 250 meters of three grams in continuous chip samples, which is, uh, if, if that's replicated in future sampling, which we're expecting back in two weeks, and in drill results would be a, a really world-class discovery. And then down in the ridge target, we, um, we also, it's, it's hard to find outcrops here because you have, you have uh, talus, which is like rubble really, that all over, all over the sides of the mountains and then glacial till in the, in the valley bottoms. So where it does outcrop though, we found 50 meters of outcrop there and we got almost three grams per ton in the, in the ridge target. So this is uh, the ridge target again, the, that gold target. Um, and I did it in the same, the same colors and the same, the same PPB soils um, and same scale as Ridge's saddle south target, um, just to compare the two. And this is, so this is what they look like. Very, very similar, the same size, same grade, and same kind of rocks. It's interesting too, and their saddle north is just on a magnetic, on the edge of a magnetic high just to the north, just like our copper bowl target is here as well. So this is switching now to the cop, to copper bowl versus ridge. This is where we had our, our highest grade results. So there we, we took a line across here, um, and that's where we had the 250 meters of, uh, of, of um, almost three grams and 100 meters of six grams. You know, since then, we've actually made another discovery right over here of similar rocks and hopefully similar grades. We're just getting the assays back. Um, and we've made another, another gold discovery on the other side of this ridge down in the next valley here as well. So it's really early days, but there's lots of, uh, lots of exciting prospecting results and hopefully in the assays over the next month. And, um, and we've got our first, uh, our, we're drilling our first hole. So we actually have a, uh, we're, we have a line of drill pads along here and we're drilling the first hole right here right now. So it is Northern BC, so we, we're trying our best to get some holes in before the weather changes, but it is getting late in the season. And we've had wind storms and snow storms and grizzlies, but, but uh, they're pushing through. And I think that's, uh, that's it. It's not it from me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about, um, so I think Libero grabbed a lot of attention in the market when those first sampling results came out, and mm -hmm. I say fairly so. I mean, 250 meters of three grams in chip sampling, that, that makes sense. There was also a fair bit of discussion around like the way that the samples were taken, and, and it didn't seem like it was uh, conventional, I suppose. Do you want to just talk about why that was the way it was? I mean. Part of it clearly is topography. You're basically working on a cliff. But yeah, yeah. Take, us through, <laughs> yeah sure. take us through why the sampling was the way that it was, why you think the results do matter, and what you're doing now to fill in. Well, it was just reconnaissance sampling, so we had to cover a huge area. We're talking 25 kilometers by 20 kilometers, so a massive, massive area. So it's to get to where the mineralization is, it would be impossible to just do traditional, traditional uh, sampling. So we used the reconnaissance sampling to narrow down where the mineralization is, and then went back and took traditional sampling on exactly where that mineralization is, and those results will be out in about two weeks. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and even with the reconnaissance sampling, though, if you have, we had five, we took hundreds of samples, and five of the highest grade samples were all adjacent to each other right here on comparable. So right. this is statistically relevant, but that's and <laughs> where, where the mineralization is. Yes, yeah. basic statistics would say. Um, let's talk about news flow now. So you have the, the f in fill or, or more detailed sampling results coming out. Yes. Uh, you're also doing some geophysics. Yeah. Just drilling, depending on how that goes. Let's talk a little bit about news flow because yes. seasonality is always a concern for those of you working in northern BC. Sure. So we're flying geophysics right now. We already had Airmax done, um, but now we're flying uh, with ZTEM, which is a. Uh, um, it can look deeper and it can, you know, we've been finding outcropping porphyry targets here throughout the project, but with that technology, we'll be able to see deep as well and see, see what's there. So that'll be exciting when we see those results and that's happening right now. Um, the sampling, uh, sampling this month, also the reconnaissance sampling from these new targets will be out this month. And then uh, drilling, the drill results will be in, in November, really. And then if those... Right now, you don't actually need to finance because you did the financing in August. But like you say, mm -hmm. uh, exploration costs money. And yeah. So yeah. it will happen again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once we have these results, though. So. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah. I think that's, uh, that's enough pestering for me. We'll take a quick break. <laughs>